Good evening. Welcome to our Monday Thursday worship service. A special welcome to our visitors. We are very happy to have you worship with us this evening. This is a special evening for six fifth graders. They will be receiving communion for the very first time. They are Seeger Brandau, Rylan Hansen, Brooke Irvin, Kylie Johnson, Liam Meitner, and Hunter Woods. They will be communing with their families. I did invite all the families to come up front so they could commune first, but they opted to stay in their comfort zone where they usually sit in their assigned seats. Uh, we will begin. I'm going to read um, the introduction to Monday Thursday. With nightfall, our Lenten observance comes to an end, and we gather with Christians around the world to celebrate the three days of Jesus' death and resurrection. At the heart of the Monday Thursday liturgy is Jesus' commandment to love one another. As Jesus washed the feet of his disciples, we are called to follow his example as we humbly care for one another, especially the poor and the unloved. At the Lord's table, we remember Jesus' sacrifice of his life, even as we are called to offer ourselves in love for the life of the world. I invite us to rise as we are able. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days reconciled with God and with one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We sing together our gathering hymn, Yezu, Yezu, fill us with your love, number 708, 708. Thank you. at the beach. 
Let us pray together the prayer of the day as it's printed in your bulletin. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment, to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from Exodus, chapter 12, verses 1 through 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The land shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goat. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb at that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head legs and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. You shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the good gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be assigned for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 116, 1 through 2, and 12 through 19. We will read it responsibly. I love the Lord, who has heard my voice, and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I call. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will lift the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. 
Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, there's so much symbolism in the Monday Thursday worship service that it's hard to select just one thing on which to preach. John in the Gospel lesson that I just read it focuses on loving one another and serving one another. Some congregations this evening will have foot washing as their theme. Many people find foot washing to be a very spiritual experience. The other Gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, report on Jesus' Last Supper with his disciples, as did the Apostle Paul uh, that you heard in the lesson from 1 Corinthians just a moment ago. Since our Monday Thursday tradition is when our fifth graders receive their first communion, I've decided to focus on the Last Supper and the Passover that came before it. Now, I think every congregation in which I have served has talked about having a Seder meal or a Passover meal on Monday Thursday. They've talked about it. It's never happened, but in every single congregation, they've talked about it. That is another possibility for Monday Thursday. A Seder meal is trying to recreate the Passover meal that Jesus had with his disciples be shortly before he was arrested. Now, Jewish people, as I'm sure you know, still celebrate the Passover today um, as it was commanded by God in the lesson from Exodus that we heard this evening. It's a celebration for them of when their ancestors, the Israelites, were led by God out of slavery in Egypt. When the Egyptian pharaoh would not let the Israelites leave Egypt for the promised land of Canaan, they were instructed to kill a lamb and place the blood from that lamb over their doorposts so that the angel would pass over their door, their house, and uh, not kill their firstborn as it did with the firstborn of the Egyptians. Um, and as a matter of fact, the animals as well, as you heard. And that did that, God ordered that so that the Pharaoh would finally let the Israelites go. Now they were instructed to eat unleavened bread, meaning bread without yeast, so it didn't have to rise. They had to be ready to go quickly. When the Passover is celebrated to commemorate the exodus from Egypt, the Jewish people will gather together with family and friends and retell the story of the exodus. 
They will eat special foods like unleavened bread to remind them that the Israelite slaves ate in haste. They eat bitter herbs like horseradish to remind them of the bitterness of slavery. They dip green vegetables like parsley or lettuce into salt water to remind them of the tears of the slaves. They have four cups of wine, each with its own symbolic meaning. The traditions of unleavened bread and bitter herbs goes back to the time of Jesus, but a lot of tra traditions have changed since the temple in Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD. Therefore, if we were to celebrate a Seder meal on this Holy Thursday in an attempt to do what Jesus did in that Last Supper, it would not be quite the same. For one thing, we are not in Jerusalem. We would not be eating lamb sacrificed at the temple. Most of the words of the Seder have been added since the destruction of the temple, and most of the foods now eaten were not eaten in those ancient days. At the time of his betrayal, arrest, and crucifixion, Jesus was in Jerusalem for the Passover celebration. That is what Je the Jewish people did prior to the destruction of the temple. They came from all over to Jerusalem just to celebrate the Passover. Lamb was sacrificed to God, and that same day, the people ate that lamb. Now, I read a story recently. It happens to be an Easter story, but it fits well with the message this evening, so I'm going to tell it anyway. Pastor Jones at St. Michael's Lutheran Church wasn't quite sure just how to put his Easter sermon together, and believe me, it wasn't for lack of advice or study. Pastor, this is Bill, Bill Haney. Listen, I'm not sure whether the Sunday school is doing their Easter pageant this year, but I've got 15 new lambs in my herd as of last night. You want me to bring one out on Sunday for the parade? Oh, and while I've got you on the phone, well, Easter morning arrived in all its splendor, and true to their word, the altar guild and the worship committee had everyone organized. No one could remember the church looking more festive and beautiful than that day. Flowers were everywhere, and the sunlight streaming through the windows sparkled and gleamed and danced on the polished wood and brass cross. Even the choir looked especially crisp as they lined up in the hall in their freshly cleaned robes. People said that the organist had picked the most delightful prelude music in a long time. Everyone was ready to begin the procession with shouts of, He is risen, except that Pastor Jones was nowhere to be seen. Finally, the choir director ran to the pastor's office door and knocked. Pastor, it's time for the service. Is something wrong? No, no. Tell the assistant to get going. I'll be out in a minute, the pastor called through the closed door. The cymbals started clinging. Shouts of he is risen began the procession, and the service was underway. Just as the last choir member turned the corner into the sanctuary, Pastor Jones dashed out of his office and into the line with the procession. Except, except it wasn't just him who was marching up to the altar. In his arms, he carried one of Bill Haney's little lambs. And what made some people in the congregation gasp with surprise was that the pastor had put a great big rubber apron over his white and gold brocade chasuble. The altar guild couldn't believe their eyes. The kids were all ooing and eyeing as the lamb came into view, and many of the good parishioners of St. Michael's didn't know what to say or think, or whether they should even continue singing the hymn. Pastor Jones went up to the altar and said, I know this is a bit unusual, or maybe even a lot, but I want you all to sit down for a minute. There's something that I have to do. And then, with his free hand, Pastor Jones carefully set aside the candles and the missile on the altar. He pulled out an old rug from beneath his apron, laid it on the table, and put the lamb on it. And then, reaching under his apron one more time, he pulled out a big, long butcher knife, lifted it up high above his head to strike the lamb, and there was a collective gasp in the church. Pastor Jones looked up, knife poised in the air, and shouted, Aren't you glad we don't have to do this anymore? Well, aren't you glad we don't have to do that anymore? Jesus changed everything when he was celebrating the Passover with his disciples. He established a new covenant, a new agreement. 
he became once and for all the sacrificed lamb. And where the Jewish people celebrated time when their ancestors were freed from slavery, we now celebrate a time when we are freed from the eternal condemnation because of our sin. The Passover meal is at this time just a commemoration. It is what the Jewish people do to remember how God had helped them. Back at the time of Jesus and before the temple was destroyed, celebrating the Passover in Jerusalem and eating the lamb that had been sacrificed to God meant that the people were sharing a meal with God. Holy Communion is more than just remembering what Jesus did for us on the cross. Yes, he said, do this for the remembrance of me, but it's more than that. We believe that Jesus is truly present with us when we celebrate Holy Communion. While we do not believe that the bread is changed into Jesus' body and the wine into his blood, we believe that he is truly present with us. So every time we celebrate Holy Communion, we are celebrating a meal with Jesus, just as his disciples did during that last meal before his betrayal and arrest. This evening, as you come forward and kneel at the foot of the cross, at the table of the Lord, remember the great sacrifice that Jesus made for you. The stripping of the altar following the meal with Jesus symbolizes his betrayal, his arrest. When we leave here this evening with the entire chancel area bare of any decoration, Jesus is in the hands of his captors on his way to be slaughtered for us the once and for all sacrificed lamb. Amen. Please stand and join in singing hymn number 471, Let Us Break Bread Together. And now with the whole church, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed, which you can find in the back cover of your hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. 
He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In these holiest of days, we offer prayers for ourselves, our neighbors, and our world. We pray for the church around the world. Write your new commandment of love on the heart of every believer and strengthen pastors, deacons, and lay leaders in humble service to your people. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for the good earth you have made. Protect fields, orchards, local farms, and gardens. Inspire us with the new life budding around us that we show more care for plants and all living creatures. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for leaders in every land. Kindle compassion, equity, in all who are called to administer justice. Guide all in positions of power away from the temptation of abuse and toward work for the common good. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for all who are in need, especially those who are incarcerated and unjustly accused. Illuminate paths to end oppression and form supportive communities gathered around a common commitment for justice and peace. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for our Savior's Lutheran Church and all who gather to receive your body and blood this night. Fill us at this shared table and nourish us well to heed your example of grace. Send us in love to those who cannot be with us due to illness, especially those on our hearts and minds. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We give thanks for those who have died in the faith. Teach us by their example and comfort us as we mourn. Renew us by the promise of life together with you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We offer to you these petitions and those we carry in our hearts, trusting in your abundant and ever-present mercy. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we will gather together our offering, a chance to give back to God a part of what God has entrusted to us.
us pray. God of glory, receive these gifts and the offering of our lives. As Jesus was lifted up from the earth, draw us to your heart in the midst of this world. Bring all creation from bondage to freedom, from darkness to light, and from death to life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
invite us to rise as we are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave it er, and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Communion this evening will be um, around the altar. Um, you'll be ushered forward. Please fill in from the back. Gluten-free and um, cups of grape juice are available. All you need to do is ask. Come to the banquet, for all is now filled.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in a wonderful sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May the sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way we live. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.